Welcome to the Anderson Schoolhouse, owned and renovated by Ashland University professors Carla and Jason Ellis. Here, people can experience how education was like in the past through reenactments, reading letters, and other historical events. Come take a look inside. I'm Carla Abreu Ellis. I'm a professor at Ashland University. I'm Jason Ellis, and uh, also a professor at Ashland University. And we've decided to restore the Anderson Schoolhouse. We started the project in September of 2014. Um, we were students at Bowling Green State University and they have a schoolhouse on campus across from the College of Education. And at that time when we were there, uh, our oldest son was in elementary school and he actually had a field trip to the schoolhouse on campus at Bowling Green. So we always wanted to have a project like that. We always thought it would be very interesting to, to own and do a project for the school kids about a schoolhouse. Um, so that's how we got into this. Yeah, I mean, the other thing is we, uh, as, as teachers, um, in a previous life, before we became professors, we've always had a commitment to, to education. So it kind of gives a inspirational way for kids to learn about history through living it, um, which is, I, I think, something that all kids want to have a chance to do. Now in terms of our programming, uh, we do have um, a program for fourth graders. They can come in and do a field trip with us. And we have different activities that they do here. Um, they look at an older map. Um, they look at the globe. They look at, they do activities with pen and ink. Um, we have them look at stereoscopes. Uh, so we do like rotation, like centers that we would call today with the group and also some timeline and reading uh, old original literature uh, from the time from 1892. Now for the second graders we do um, a program based on the McGuffey Reader and then the eighth graders we actually have one of the teachers who taught at the Anderson Schoolhouse, one of her brothers went to Civil War. He sadly did not return but there is a letter that he wrote to one of his sisters so that's something we do with the eighth graders, talking about civil war, but looking at a different perspective. One that's a real perspective, it's authentic, it's a letter written from somebody who was experiencing that at that time. So these are the programs that we offer here. The students come here and they dress up in pure correct clothing, and we dress up in pure correct clothing, so they have an authentic experience while they're here at the schoolhouse. Well, I think it's, it's great because you see such differentiation that occurs in uh, the one-room school. So you have first through eighth grade all under one roof and one teacher. So you have to imagine the kind of juggling that's going on um, within the room to be able to manage to give curriculum at eight different grade levels. So it's, uh, it's fascinating to see that because we talk about differentiation, we talk about changing things to adapt to each child's needs. They've been doing that since the 1850s and probably even before that. Uh, we opened the doors. Um, we did a short restoration in this building because most of the building was in very good shape when we got it. So we didn't have to do much other than bring in desks and things like that. So when we opened our doors over the summer for the community to come in and visit the schoolhouse, it was very interesting to see how community members had relatives who actually came to this school at one point in time. And they would walk in here and say, oh, my mom was here and she remembers this teacher or that teacher and that she had to sit in a corner because she misbehaved and had to use the dunce cap. And the next day, this lady comes back with a report card from her mom and her mom's eighth grade diploma that she received when she graduated from this school, which allowed her then to go on to any high school in Ohio after she graduated eighth grade. So it's, it's an important piece of this community, of the local community, not just Ashland County, but Milton Township. And there's a really a, a fascinating story that goes with schoolhouses because you know every every two miles roughly there's a schoolhouse an old schoolhouse at least there was and if you think about this this is like in the heart of farmland in you know back then with huge tracts of land in between each other and you had a lot of immigrants so school was kind of the normalizer everybody would come to school 
to learn a language, second language, albeit. So a lot of teachers had, had that also to, to work with, as well as uh, teaching them what Ameri being American was. So within the schoolhouse, you have all these iconic things that, that represent America and the culture that is America. Yes, the brick and mortar has been here for a very long time and has been part of this community. So um, it would be really sad if this building disappeared from here. Um, at the same time, it was a school, it was a church, it was a community club during over the years. So there's a lot of history and a lot of people that have gone through this building. If you walk around this building, you see a lot of carvings on the brick from kids. At the time, kids could carry, you know, small knives. So they would carve their names, their initials on the brick outside of here. So if you think about it, you know, so many lives and so many people, students from here actually became doctors. One of them became a mayor of a nearby town. So there's a lot of, you know, communities to probably living in Milton Township in Ashland that somebody attended this school or church or community club uh, and some that they have moved on out of this community but their history is still present in this building. So if you think about history, right, the word story is even present in it. So history is made up of tons of stories. This building in itself contains tons of stories. The uh, the reality is that, you know, in this building, it was used to launch the Democratic uh, Party, political party within Milton Township. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the minute that we took the, the building over from the previous owners, who did a fantastic job of preservation in itself, because it was, you know, it was un unhurt as a building. They hadn't architecturally damaged the building. They had preserved the structure. So all the woodwork that you see in here is all original woodwork. The window frames are all original window flame, frames. The plaster is the original plaster with a few fixes here and there, right? But, and the floor in itself is the original floor. In fact, you can even count the number of desks that were in the room by counting the hole marks in the, in the ground because there's three holes per foot of desk for each of the three screws that would go into the base of the desk for each foot. So it's, it's kind of a fascinating process as you uncover these things, it drives you further. Basically what happens is you have the kids seated by, by grade level. So what's going to happen is they're doing desk work, each group's doing desk work on a task that the teachers provided and then when the teacher's ready to give instruction, if it's not whole group instruction for review, they'll march the students up here to the front of the room and basically give the lesson in small group and then send them back to do desk work. So it's that constant rotation. So imagine you have eight groups rotating through uh, all the time, all day long. And I, that's what I meant about differentiation. You have to be on your toes. There's also these wonderful stories of, you know, for instance, if the fourth graders weren't understanding their, their times tables, they would put the fifth graders to, to tutor within the same classroom. So it's this, this great playoff. Um, and you also have to see that the grade levels weren't based on age, really, because for a lot of the, the instances, with the, when the boys got older, they didn't go to school the whole year. They only came during the winter session because they were out in the fields during the summer session. Okay, so the schoolhouses in, uh, in the Ashland area, they're a little bit different than what you see in, in different areas of the country. So you see like a lot of old fashioned wood frame, very simple buildings. There were schoolhouses, you know, between the 1850s and 1900s, early 1900s. You have these huge Romanesque buildings like we have in Ashland County for some reason. So you have huge arches in the front. A, you know, this, this oversized bell tower that really stands out. It almost makes it look uh, like a church at times rather than a schoolhouse. And a lot of people confuse it for that. For more information, visit their website at www.andersonschoolhouse.com.